folks that visit the museum always have a lot of questions. How do you know where to dig? What kind of metal detector do you use? Uh, we'll try to answer a few of those questions in this, uh, this video. It's a little bit long, but if you stay with us, uh, you might get something out of it. got is a, uh, a loop of uh, wire. See it here. So uh, several loops of wire in there. That's connected to a, uh, a, a coax cable that uh, goes up to the uh, detector box. And just a, uh, a tow rope to, to pull the, uh, the, uh, the plastic rig that holds the, uh, the coil. Okay, uh, inside the truck then, we've got uh, the, uh, uh, the control box, Pulsar 2 from uh, Thomas Brower in Germany, and uh, that coax just plugs into, uh, into the back of the box. Uh, we turn on, and uh, set a tick rate. And we're ready to start uh, start searching. For a nice flat field like this, and I'm trying to uh, you know cover 300 acres here. Uh, you know, I try to keep the speed between uh, 10 miles an hour. I don't like to go too fast. You always ask me what it sounds like when you go over uh, a meteorite. And in the Brenham field we get pretty much two distinct types of signals. One is a material that's close to the surface uh, and it's usually some sort of man-made trash. Uh, the other, the meteorite uh, signals tend to be deeper, so uh, let's let's hear what that uh, what that sounds like as we go over them. And uh, again, I just put my little handheld shovel uh, in the ground there to uh, to simulate what a. Uh, uh, okay, that's real characteristic. The double signal is when uh, you're going over uh, each segment of the uh, the coil. Now this is a uh, uh, signal that uh, sounds pretty good. I mean, uh, there's no way to tell if this is a meteorite or trash without digging it up, but listen to this. You hear kind of the uh, gradual rise and fall of the, uh, the uh, uh, signal that uh, you know tells me the target's uh, a little bit deeper. Uh, the next step is to uh, localize, uh, use the one meter coil and localize the uh, target enough that we could actually uh, probe, use a uh, uh, steel rod to uh, try to uh, hit the thing and, uh, or, or start digging it up. So uh, we're just going to try to localize this, uh, this same target now and uh, see where the, the best place to start digging or probing would be. as uh, you know where I want to start digging so pretty much right in the middle of the coil given that I don't get any uh, uh, pronounced signal with the uh, handheld I know it's at least uh, two two and a half feet deep uh, I usually uh, push a, uh, a probe down to uh, see if I've got a solid object or an old piece of trash if it's an old uh, rusted can the probe will just uh, push through I'm hitting a pretty solid object there, so another good signal. 
that we've got a meteorite here. Do next is put a magnet on the end of that rod, pull up a few small pieces of whatever's down there. Okay, we're uh, back at the laboratory and um, we uh, were able to dislodge a little piece of uh, material from uh, from the uh, object that's giving us a good signal in the field. Um, and we're going to do a nickel test to uh, to make sure it's a uh, it's really a meteorite before we start digging out there. Um, I can't tell people to do this unless they have laboratory experience. Chemicals, if they're not used properly, can be dangerous. And even with a simple uh, nickel test like this, control. This is just a piece of hematite, and uh, we're just going to scratch some of that off on this uh, sandpaper. Positive control. This should give us a uh, a uh, uh, positive nickel test. This is a piece of Camden Diablo, well, uh, American coin. The the silver part uh, is 25% uh, nickel, so that's also a source of a positive control. And then finally, our test sample. Just uh, scratching some of that off to uh, generate some, uh, some material. The first part of the nickel test is to add uh, uh, oxidizer. If, uh, if you don't do this, I guarantee you'll get a uh, false positive. Okay, it's been uh, 30 minutes. Now we have to uh, neutralize the reaction. And I've got this uh, titrated so that uh, two drops of my base will give me a neutral pH. Okay, now we'll just uh, apply the uh, samples to the uh, test strip. A okay, negative control. Positive control one. That's the uh, Canyon Diablo. Positive control two. That's the dime. Test specimen. Negative control is indeed negative. That uh, means our reagents and test strips and everything are working okay. Uh, here's our positive control. That's the Canyon and Diablo uh, and the uh, the dime. Uh, both uh, nice, uh, nice positive. This is our test sample, and uh, it uh, it's pink, so uh, we've got nickel there. So I'm very certain that the uh, uh, the specimen in the ground. Let me see if I can zoom on that. The uh, specimen in the, in the ground is in fact a uh, a meteorite. Strips are uh, Baker test strips. Zoom back a little bit. Um, use these for. Gosh, 20 years. Uh, they're uh, semi-quantitative, and uh, so if you were careful, you could even get an estimate of the uh, uh, percentage of nickel in your uh, in your specimen. We're back at the uh, site where we got a nice signal. It's uh, pretty early in the morning. Uh, it's been awful hot in Kansas. Uh, a lot of triple-digit days. Uh, a couple of 114s. So uh, I'll try to get an early start and. Uh, Last thing to do is just dig this thing up uh, and see what we've got here. Iron palisite or a combo. Um, high tech equipment for this part of it is the uh, post hole digger and shovels and such. Um, metal detector is handy once you get down a foot or two it helps you uh, to home in on it and maybe not do as much extraneous digging. Uh, so uh, let's see what we got out here. Looks like we got a friend. Uh, we're not the only early birds. I don't know if that's a badger or a skunk. <laughs> He's uh, out looking for some breakfast, I guess. Okay, so here we go. Okay, uh, let's start off with the uh, postal digger here. Just see if we can't uh, get down to uh, the meteorite so we can. Uh, Minimize the amount of digging we have to do by hand. Okay, folks, uh, we got off easy this time. Uh, the uh, meteorite, uh, I don't know if you can see it down in the, the hole there. I'll try to, try to zoom in. See the edge of it there? Uh, right there. I bought a shovel, and it looks like, uh, oh, we're only. Uh, Oh, a couple of a couple of feet deep. So, uh, okay. Uh, better get started I'm here, guys. I hope you brought your digging arms. 
<laughs> There's nothing, uh, nothing glamorous about this. Yeah, we'll Somebody want to grab that? Up. I'd make. Are we about the center? Uh, yeah. This, this is one of the more shallow ones. Okay. Uh, Name Brenham. Is that after a scientist? That uh, no, that old uh, grain elevator. Yeah. That's all that's left of the town of Brenham. That might be a fairly good sign. I'm sorry, you said how many years ago? Uh, maybe 20,000 years ago. Oh, and yeah. the, the way they get, try to get that information is that when the thing's floating around in space, uh, it's getting blasted with cosmic rays. Huh. And that causes changes. And then when it lands on Earth, we're protected by the Earth's magnetic field and the yeah. atmosphere. So those changes start to decay in a, uh, in a predictable way. <laughs> Much more there to... You have a magnet on the end of that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because there's so much metal in there. Yeah. It, uh... They look like they rusted some. Oh, what? yeah. Well, 20, you know, it don't rain much out here, but <laughs> <laughs> over 20,000 oh, years, we, we had maybe one or two, yeah, a couple inches of rain. <laughs> so washed in and then dried on the surface, and that's happened over is. and over again. Hey, okay. Finish up my uh, my YouTube video. No. <laughs> what year was that? Probably 35, 40 pounds. 35, 40, okay. I would guess. Okay, oh man. It's always way more than you think they're gonna. 38 pounds, 12.4 ounces. Okay, here she is, all cleaned up. Final weight, 17.39 kilograms. Uh, it's definitely a, uh, a palisite. Got a nice cavity uh, uh, groove on the side here. And uh, we can tell it's a pal, at least on the, the outer surfaces, because the uh, presence of the uh, crystals, olivine crystals, and uh, metal, uh, metal surrounding metal matrix. So uh, usual, very typical uh, shape, kind of domed on one side, flatter on the other. So all in all, real nice, uh, real nice looking specimen. Gorgeous. Uh, people always ask me about uh, a fusion crust on these. They've been in the ground for so long that uh, the uh, surface has reacted with uh, uh, moisture in the soil. So uh, if there's any fusion crust, here it is, it's in the dirt. Uh, there's usually a, a layer of this oxidized material that comes off of the uh, the meteorite as it's removed from the uh, ground. So there's your fusion crust. Okay, folks, that's all we have for you. Hopefully we answered some of your questions. And remember, if you want to see the world's largest collection of Brennan meteorites, it's not the East Coast, it's not the West Coast, it's the No Coast, uh, Kansas Meteorite Museum uh, between Haviland and Greensburg. Hope to see you.